All right, here is the back of the transmission where that seal goes in this big hole. And I've already removed the speedometer drive gear, which is there. Took a 7 8 and it just unscrews. Be careful, it comes out in two pieces. What I've got to do now is take a wire cone on an angle grinder and clean this up real nice. And FYI, the seal pounds out this direction. And it comes out here. It's going to take a lot of persuasion, so get your hammer and your punch and get ready to rock and roll. Each of these bolts was a 916. This one here is a long bolt. Keep track of it because you're going to have to put it back in the same position. I have the torque specs for everything. I'll go over that as I install it. And let's just walk around the back and I'll show you the old seal. I've pounded out. It's a little different looking than what I was sent, so I'm not real thrilled about that. But here's the back of it. There's the front. You can see where my punch popped through it. But laying them down next to each other. Let's see if I can do this. Laying them down. You can see that they are the same size. A little off center, but they are the same size. And same thickness. So I'm thinking this is just a new style of that old seal there. And my service manual for the truck said to soak this thing in oil for an hour. Well, I don't have a bucket of oil to soak it in. So I just sprayed it with PB Blaster penetrating oil. I have to do. Now let's see, here's some of my miscellaneous parts. This is the output shaft that connects to the drive shaft. Tell, I gotta clean it up too. I haven't really cleaned anything up yet. Just kinda took it all out. This is the little gear that drives the speedometer drive gear, which is here. And I'll show you how it comes out in two parts. Slides right across, right apart like that. Set that down. And here you might be able to see what I was talking about. You can just put a socket right on there. It comes out 7 8 And it's not torqued real tight either, so don't get crazy with it when you put it back in. This is the retaining nut. It's a nylock nut. You can see a little bit of plastic, rubber, whatever it is right there. This was an inch and a half. So that's not a common size a lot of people have in their toolbox. You might need to get one. I'm, to, when I replace this nut, I'm going to use a little bit of Loctite inside the threads so it doesn't spin itself off and cause me a catastrophe. I don't like catastrophes. Now we'll come over here real quick. Since I've drained the oil, I wanted to make sure I put the right amount of oil in it. So what I do, I went to Summit and ordered me one gallon of 8090. Lucas, of course, you gotta put quality in to get quality out. And the uh, service manual also says that it holds one gallon of oil, so pretty convenient being in one gallon jug. Here, we'll crawl underneath here and uh, I'll show you what it looks like underneath. You can kind of get an idea of what I've been talking about. <clears throat> Got some tools underneath here, too. Alright, there it is. Uh, oh, I got dirt in my eye. Alright, here's the output shaft. I have it in gear so this thing won't spin. I was taking the nut off and everything. It was spinning, so I stuck it in gear. God, this dirt in my eye is bothering me. Anyway, to me what this looks like is almost like a 540 shaft for a tractor PTO. And there's a little bearing or washer here. I didn't even realize it was there. Let's put that right back on. Don't need to take that off. Just put it right back on. 
don't lose it. <sighs> I'm going to take the angle grinder here too and clean up the surface. And of course, this takes a gasket. Now, I've looked all over the internet for a few days. Can't find just a gasket for this thing. You have to buy the whole overhaul kit with synchronizers and seals and everything. It's like 150 bucks, and the seal on eBay was $12. I don't want to spend $150 for a gasket, essentially, because that's all I need. The transmission is good. It shifts, it drives, it does everything it's supposed to do the way it's supposed to do it. I just don't want to spend the money to buy only a gasket that I need. So what's my solution? I'm going to use black RTV that is okay for uh, gear oil. Being this is 8090 and that is gear oil. It's the same stuff you use when you take the back cover off of a differential to drain the fluid or do whatever and you have to replace it with silicone. Some don't have gaskets, some have silicone. It's the same silicone, so it should be all right. This is a cast iron case, so it should be okay there. When I take the wire cone to it, I am going to have to be very careful not to bung up this bearing with it. I don't want to buy that. Right now, with my fingernail is on, it's a snap ring. A really big snap ring to keep this thing in place. If you're really careful, you don't need to worry about the alignment of the shaft. It, it doesn't move at all. I'm trying to move it. It doesn't move at all. It has a little bit of play in it, but what are you going to do at 60 years old? Anyway, this is part three of my little video series I'm making. And yes, they're all on the same day. But I don't know how to splice them together without the video editing software. And that's just annoying having that word Filmora go diagonally across the screen. You can't see anything. So, this is what it is. That output thing, I can't, can't think of the name of it, that connects to the drive shaft, slid off really easily. You don't need a puller or anything, or I didn't. I just grabbed it with my hand and just slid, came off like butter, just easy. Pretty thrilled about that. Anyway, I'm going to shut this off, clean up my parts, and <coughs> have part four, which will be reinstallation, and I will go over the torque specs then. Thank you for watching.